Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am talking with Justine Beauregard about magnetic offers and sales and just putting people over profit because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? Serving people and profit is a byproduct of that. So I am pumped for this conversation today. And with that being said, Justine, welcome into the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. So excited. So before we dive in, tell us more about yourself, who you are and what you do. Yeah. So my name is Justine Beauregard, as you said, and I call myself a creative business strategist. So it's basically a fancy way of saying that I help people build, grow and scale businesses. And I'm not just a coach and I'm not just a consultant or a strategist. I kind of blend those two things together. So my background, my grandmother was a serial entrepreneur and she did this in the time when women did not do this. (laughs) She had a business in a male dominated industry, five kids. She retired my grandfather when he was in his forties and I loved it. I grew up with really strong matriarchs in my family. My mom was a single mom. She was headstrong and determined and just kind of trailblazed. And when I grew up seeing these women and being told, you can do anything, you can be anyone, even though we didn't grow up with a lot, I really believed it. Like I took it on as a persona of like a gritty, resilient version of myself. And so I've been through, you know, as everyone has been, there are versions of learning and mistakes and growth and failure and pushback and all of those different experiences. And so I started my career working in male dominated industries. I was in tech marketing for several years, working for startups, kind of got burnt out, moved to the publishing world. Um, That was very high paced and very corporate. And I didn't love the environment of having big teams and lots of red tape. So I went back to startups Then I decided towards the end of my, let's call it a corporate career, um, that I wanted to make a difference. And so I transitioned to educational nonprofit and I became the director of the annual giving department and the campaign associate for a 50 year anniversary for a local school. And I loved it, but I didn't love all the aspects of it. There were parts of it where you know, I love the fundraising side. I love the child education side. I love the nonprofit side, but I didn't love the late night events and the keeping up appearances. And, you know, there was still some of that red tape. And so when I got pregnant with my first baby and I have two kids, it kind of shone a light on, I want to raise them and also have a business. And my husband was super supportive. He was like, why not now? And I had always envisioned doing it in my 50s. And I was like, you know what? Why not now? And so I took the leap. That was eight years ago. And here I am running this business, helping. I've helped over 500 clients now build their businesses. And I have helped scale companies to up to $300 million. So it's been really amazing, this whole journey and just learning and figuring it out and you know, going through the ups and downs of building a business. So I'm excited to talk about those topics because they're really sort of the cornerstones and the anchors of how I've grown my business and how my perspective has changed about business. And I think we're seeing a huge paradigm shift into compassionate marketing and looking at people over profit and all of these types of things, which is so beautiful to see. So I'm grateful to be here to pour into the audience and to just share my perspectives on things. What a cool story. Seriously. Like, I feel inspired just hearing your story. I mean, how cool is that to have a grandma that was like a trailblazer? Yeah. What an incredible example because you're right. Women of that era, that was not the thing that they did. 
right yeah. from day one i mean she was like the perfect shining example of like no it's possible like you don't have to let society dictate what you do and to you talked about you know just mistakes and failure and growth and leaning into what feels good because so often we think that we have to pick one or the other but it's like why can't we why can't we do both raise our kids and have a business because that right there it is possible and you are proof that it is possible and i agree too i really do think we're like at the the beginning of a huge paradigm shift and i'm thankful for that because so much of this bro marketing and you know fear mongering and just all of these things that we've been thrown for so long let's stop that narrative and change it for the better so i absolutely love your story. Like, that's awesome. Uh So let's dive in. So where do you even advise people to start? So for the person that's coming to you, that's like, you know what, sales are just icky and sleazy. And I just, I, I get, I get cold and clammy whenever I think about like telling somebody that I have an offer where, where does someone even start? Yeah. It starts with loving your offer and having a good offer. So I often equate this to, you know, when you get a new pair of sneakers or a new cell phone or a new car, you are telling the world about it. You're like, have you seen this phone? Look at this camera. It's absolutely amazing. Look at the zoom capability on that. Or like, check out these sneakers. They come in great colors. They're so light. I can run in them. I don't get blisters. They're amazing. Or, you know, you get that car and you're like, it's amazing. The gas mileage is insane. Look at the body style. This thing is like sexy. I love it. I love driving in it. I feel confident in it. And then when it comes to our offers, we're like, so I have this phone and it's, it's kind of okay, but like, do you want to see it? Or like, I could totally put it away. No big deal. Right. And I try to remind people when you love something instantly, that becomes magnetic. There's a book from, the 1920s, written by a woman who was an entrepreneur. Her name's Florence Scovel Shin, and it's called The Secret Door to Success. And in that book, there's a quote that says something I'm paraphrasing, but something like, when you are interested in yourself, others will find you interesting. And that is the secret door to success, is when you are fascinated and enamored by and just excited about your offer, you will tell everyone you know about it. When you feel like it's a steal, you won't have a problem sharing the price, all of those things. And so that's what I teach my clients is how to really create magnetic messaging and offers that are irresistible, that everybody's lining up around the corner going, how do I get one? How do I get that? And even then I say, you don't even want them asking those questions because you want to make it easy for them to know where to go and to get it. I love it because you are absolutely right. We do that all the time. And I feel like as women, we do that more so than our male counterparts. It's like, oh, well, I I have this thing, but oh, wait, I I don't know. Let me put it away. You know, oh, you might might not want it. You know, we really play small and that holds us back. Totally, totally. And I think that there's something of, you know, the, the woman's desire to do the right thing to be mindful of other people, which are actually great sales tactics. Those are beautiful human skills that a lot of men can't learn, which puts us at a competitive advantage just by our sex and gender, right? Is we show up with this nurturing desire to be authentic and to tell the truth and to connect and authentically relate to the people across from us. And those are critical sales skills that sometimes take people years to master. And as women, I feel like it's innate for most of us to be able to sit across from someone and go, I care about you. What do you need today? And then really pairing that with that irresistible, intentional desire for matching people with the right products and services and knowing that your offer is the best thing you can give them, that makes for an easy sales conversation. And usually when people come to me and say, I don't like sales, my response is, 
that's because you just haven't figured out your way to sell yet. You're just not great at it yet in your way. So let's figure out what your style of selling is, what is going to make it feel good. And maybe it's the people that you're speaking to. Maybe it's the offer that you're selling. We've got to figure out what is the block. There's always something. And then once we figure that out, it's just a matter of taking a couple of steps and then that's it. Like the boundary between you and success is probably a thin line, but it looks like a wall, right? Like picture sheetrock with nothing behind it, standing between you and success. All you have to do is like gently nudge it and it will just fall over, but it looks really scary. And so another kind of metaphor for this, I don't know if you've ever heard the story of the elephant with the rope, but there was this story years ago that this elephant trainer tied baby elephants to a little stump and it trained them to not leave the premises that they were on. There was actually no fence in this area. And so they would find little stumps and tie the elephants to them. And as the elephant grew being tied to this stump, it would only go within the radius of the tie. And one day when the elephant was grown, they took the rope off, but the elephant would never leave the radius because it was trained to stay where it was. It was, that is a method of how they train elephants. And so when we think we are the elephant, we are trained to stay safe in this radius of what we're able to do when everything around us, it's like the Truman show. It's just like, who knows what's going on? And you start to push the boundaries a little bit and suddenly you've broke free and there are no walls. And it's a great feeling to recognize that that opportunity was there the whole time. I love that because you're absolutely right. Most times that boundary, it's us. We are what's standing in our way. And two, you said, you know, figuring out what your way that feels good to sell is what feels good to you because i think so many times we're over consuming so often that we think we have to mirror what everyone else is doing yes a hundred percent and i think too that sometimes we have great ideas we love something that we've created and we see something else that If it wasn't on our radar, we probably wouldn't have thought twice about it. But now that it's, now that there's an awareness created around that thing, we suddenly start to question ourselves. Like you might love your body. You might love the way that you look post kids and, you know, in your forties and you just like show up and you love it. And then you see a picture of JLo at 53 looking amazing and shredded and you're like, I could do better. Right. And this is kind of where we get to with social media is you have to kind of treat these things like a tool, right? You're not getting on your phone to endlessly scroll. You're getting on your phone to intentionally post. You have times of day and filters for what makes you feel good and what adds to your life instead of detracting from your life. So there's a lot of things that we control and influence about our environment and our behaviors and our perceptions of the world. And when you start to just create, it's just noticing and naming, right? Creating a mindfulness like that inspires me or that discourages me. And if it's the latter, it has to go. Like you, you do this pruning of your environment. It doesn't mean no forever. It just means no for now. And whatever you're reacting to in a negative way, or that's creating some inherent bias or something that's detracting from your joy and you living in your zone of genius and you doing the things that you want to do and you being raised up and feeling like you're supported in your ideas, those things are what you want to look for. You want to just be mindful of them and then curate an environment that really fosters your growth and fosters that joy instead of sucking it out of you and taking all of the energy away from the things that are important to you. So, so good because I, that's one of my, my biggest beliefs is that social media can be such a tool when you reframe how you're using it and the advice you dropped right there that can be the game changer 
for so many when running your business. And also you talked about just the awareness, getting the awareness because so many times we have these feelings, but we don't even know why they're there. We just might say, oh, you know what? I'm just overwhelmed. I'm just burnt out. I just, we make these excuses, but unless you really have that awareness, you can't create a change. You can't begin to reframe your, your relationship with social media. So that right there is pure gold. Well, and the other thing too, is to transform closed statements into open-ended questions. Instead of, I feel burnt out, it's, why do I feel burnt out? What is burning me out? What would make me feel better? Like you need to begin shifting the way you talk to yourself because you wouldn't just accept a friend coming up to you and saying, I'm so burnt out. And you go, oh gosh, I'm sorry. Have a good day. <laughs> there needs to be something more there. The, your first instinct with your loved ones, people in your circle is to say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, having empathy or compassion. And then what can I do to help? How do we change this? What's happening for you? But with us, we just kind of accept that that's our reality. I'm overwhelmed. Okay. And so what is the question to follow? Like I'm overwhelmed. So I'm going to accept it. There's no way out of it. Like those are closed statements. And so the more we can root our own personal dialogue into something of curiosity that's really rooted in those open-ended questions, the more we can orient ourselves towards solution-oriented mindsets that create real shifts quickly versus just sitting in the fog and the turmoil and the despair that's created by these closed statements. Ooh, I like that term, solution oriented mindset. That's yeah. good. Because that, <laughs> that almost leads us into people over profit. I mean, yeah. that right there, when you take money off the table, and just start to engage with your clients with your customers, as people and build those relationships, that can be a game changer. What have you found? Yeah, so I like to say that people come before profit and they make the profit inevitable. So it's not like you're taking money off the table completely. You're kind of recognizing and creating an awareness around if I make a difference in people's lives, I'm going to get paid, right? Because money is an energetic currency. It's just putting value in a physical form. And the more that you can create value for people, the more they're going to want to pay you back for that value. And it's not always one for one. You might go out and help somebody create a real change in their life and they don't actually pay you for that. But then suddenly someone finds out about that and they say, oh my gosh, I heard that you did, you know, being on this podcast, I heard you on Amy's podcast and it inspired me to take this action and it created some momentum and I want to talk more to you. That is the exchange of all the energy. Like you put things out there and you get things back in a different way. And so there have been so many times where I've driven through a toll booth and paid for someone behind me and not, obviously they're behind me. They can't pay me back. They can't cover my toll. What's the point of that, right? But then a few weeks later, I'll be at a drive through getting a coffee and the person in front of me will cover my coffee. And you start noticing that when you're putting out and you're giving more than you're expecting to get, all of a sudden, amazing opportunities start coming to you. And that's because you're putting a lot of things out there. And so it's inevitable that they're going to come back to you. And that was not a one-for-one -one exchange, but it happens all the time. Or you can help someone and they might not be able to afford to pay you, but they know someone who is or can get you hooked up with a guest spot on this podcast as another example. You know, So you're talking to someone, they connect you to someone else. And so it's not always about just focusing on the sale and the dollars. If you make enough of an impact, the income follows that impact. And so whenever someone says like, I want to be making $10,000 a month, I always say, are you putting out $10,000 of value a month? Because 
that's how you're going to attract $10,000. And it's not a woo concept either, even though I'm a little bit woo, so we can get into that. But, you know, I, it is really foundationally, you need to be giving that amount at minimum in order to receive that amount back. No one is going to keep paying you if you're giving $5 of value and they're paying you $5 because there's people who are providing $15 of value and charging $2 and you have to kind of keep up with, and it's easy to do this, by the way, it's easy to pour in and over deliver and over give and have that go giver type of mindset instead of the go getter type of mindset. Like we are inherently human beings that are out to preserve our natural state of being and our health and our happiness and our own bubble. And we're also social creatures. And so we desire the acceptance and approval of other people. And we also have this really innate need and draw towards self-preservation. And so by having us as one of the people in that equation and preserving our mental health, our boundaries, our joy, all of those things, and also being social and getting out there and getting the acceptance and the buy-in from other people, you're really able to create a lot of value in really simple ways. Oh my gosh, that is so, so good. Because yeah, once you really start to give, just, you know, almost under promise, but over deliver and not expect anything in return. You're right. It's crazy how it works. But it, it's just, it's like the mindset shift from scarcity into abundance. And there is so much flipping abundance in this world. <laughs> and that right there is such a game changer. Whether you're woo, not woo, it works. It's fact. There is research out there. It changes everything. Totally, totally. And I think when people start to kind of envision what does it look like to get to that next level, what does it look like to be this totally abundant person? You'll your brain will come up with again those that solution oriented mindset, asking those curious questions. What would it look like to do that? And you're not pre programmed to come up with complex ideas, so it's not going to be develop this 16 week long thing that's going to be you know 15 steps and whatever. What your brain is going to come up with is call my client and check in on them send an email to see how people are doing, ask for the referral from someone who just had a win. These are quick ways to over deliver and to create more abundance. And it doesn't take much, you know, when, when someone pops into your mind, take the 10 seconds and say, how are you? You've been on my mind. I do that with my clients all the time. If they have missed a few calls in my group program, I might drop them a note and say, Hey, it's been a few weeks, just making sure you have everything you need. I know you're not required to go to calls and, you know, you're doing your thing, whatever, but you've been on my mind and I want you to know that I'm here for you and I care about you. It takes no time at all, really. And it makes such a difference. Sometimes the people respond, sometimes they don't get back to it. Sometimes they join the call that day and go, thanks for the reminder. And so it's really nice to just think over delivering doesn't have to be giving or creating this massive thing, it can be as simple as saying hi or making a connection or thinking of someone and dropping a link to something that reminded you of them that adds value. Yes, because again, it's those relationships. It's how we make people feel that they're going to remember. I mean, even if you think about a great experience at a restaurant or a terrible experience at a restaurant. You don't remember all the mediocre ones in between. Those yeah. really good ones and really bad ones stand out. So if you take the time to nurture those relationships, that right there makes it yeah. easy. It makes it so much easier. Because like you said, it does not take a lot of time to drop a quick email, a simple voice memo, like just any of these things, nurture those that are already in your community. I think so many times we get so frustrated about, you know, I need more leads. I need more leads. I need more leads. Well, why aren't you nurturing the ones that you have? So those become your advocates. Those are telling your friends. They're giving you amazing testimonials. Yes. And that, that increases that magnetic desire to you, just like you were talking. Totally. And, you know, the other day I was on a date with my son. <laughs> I took him Love to a it. restaurant for dinner. And I said, you and me are going on a date. 
So we go there. We had excellent service. I asked for the manager, called the manager over to the table and said, I just want you to know that the waitress serving our table, here's, here's her name. She is exceptional and tipped her 35%, was super happy with the service and made it a point to say something. And I think we can practice these skills every day. Since I was a child, I would go into the grocery store when I was just at the checkout and just say something nice about the cashier. I love your glasses. That top really suits your complexion. Like, I love what you're doing with your hair today. It looks amazing or, you know, whatever. There's always something to practice kind of gratitude and giving and making people feel good. And they remember you. Like my first job ever was working in retail and I had a line in the store, when there were other cashiers available, they would come to my line because every time I would say, oh my gosh, you're back for more of these flowers for your like vase that you're making for your grandkids or your neighbors or, oh my gosh, another stamp. Oh, you're so creative. I love it. Feel free to bring in your artwork. I'd love to see it. And these people, I would remember little details and I would make it a point to you know, say kind things about them if it was the first time I met them. And people appreciate that. And it really doesn't take much at all to just thank your, you know, per, the pilot on a plane when you go flying. Thank you for a great flight. That was really amazing. Great landing or whatever. And it just brightens up their day. And it's great to say. And everyone else is walking by. And that could be the difference between someone feeling miserable and really hating their work to someone feeling really lit up and grateful and inspired to do it again the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think innately we all desire connection. And when someone connects with us and affirms us, it feels good to give them that affirmation. Like to like for me, giving someone a compliment, that makes me feel good too. It's not as much, you know, for them. Yes. Because yeah, that's awesome. But it makes me feel good as well. So mm -hmm. it just really starts to reframe your mindset and rewire your brain because there is so much science behind all of this. It's not woo, it's science. <laughs> I love that. It's so true. Yes, it is. Justine, this was phenomenal. Thank you so much for sharing yeah, sure. your value with our listeners. Where can we get in your world and how can we learn more? Yes. So since you're listening to a podcast, I actually have a podcast called People Over Profit. So feel free to tune in and subscribe to that. I also have a free business building academy on Facebook. So you can sign up right from my website, justinebeauregard.com. There's links to my paid program. That's $5 a day. We have 12 calls a month, unlimited support in a private community, a portal of resources to help you kind of grow your business and create those magnetic offers. There's lots of things. So Everything's pretty much connected right from my website, justinebeauregard.com. Amazing. Thank you again so I'm much. Sure. I do appreciate so you. Yeah. Thank and you. until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 